Hello again, Queen Rain here, and today we're picking up a game by Konami. We're doing uh, Castlevania: Aria of Sorrow for the Nintendo Game Boy Advance. Hopefully, I can make it through this playthrough without too much incident. Um, I got a new recording system. This uh, should work as good, if not better, than my Descent playthrough. So, let's get started. I have played and finished this game once. And I got sort of halfway through a second playthrough. Play the game on hard mode, although it's quite difficult even on normal mode. You guys can read the scrolling text on your own. I'm not very good at reading text that I haven't written. Um, Rome Mithril, who played this game before I did and actually inspired me to play it myself, uh, took the time to read all the text for people watching him, which I thought was really nice of him, but, you know, it's not really my thing. I'm sorry if I scroll through this section sort of fast. I read a lot faster than most people do, and I've already read this text a couple of times before. I'll try to go through it at a uh, reasonable pace, though. So we get a free soul right off the bat, the winged skeleton, that throws spears. The spears are fairly powerful, although not as good as they could be. However, they do stick around for about one second after they land, meaning they can be used to continually damage bosses. So we finally have control. Um, pressing start brings up your inventory where you can set souls, equip items, um, use items, switch on, switch on or off ability type souls, set the Game Boy to sleep mode, go into your config, change your button configuration, and you have a beast diary. Select brings up a Metroid style map, which is really very convenient. So let's get this let's get the ball rolling. We start off in the castle corridor. You wanna hang around and fight zombies for a while. 
They drop two fairly useful items pretty early on. They drop the base lard, which is probably one of the most powerful weapons this early in the game. And they drop a cloth tunic. Um, until the zombie is totally upright, they actually can't hurt you. So if you're in a hurry, you can just speed past them. Or you can jump over them. Once inside, you want to watch out for these two bats here. And you, there's a short sword here you can pick up. And since it's better than the knife I have, I'm going to equip it. It's got a lot more... It's got a lot more reach. I'd say about twice as much reach as the initial equip does. So you want to head through this door here. And head down to the underground reservoir, where there's an item for us to pick up. Beware of the tiny devils. They can do a surprising amount of damage, but the skeleton is the main threat in the area. We've picked up a pendant. A pendant boosts your luck by one point. It's useful... or that is useful because the higher your luck is, the more likelihood enemies will drop souls, weapons, items, and armor. And then across the water over here, we picked up the merman soul. Fire's water pistol. Across the water, we get our first gray soul, the gravekeeper, which allows us to backdash by pressing the left shoulder button. In here is your first save point. So, I'm going to save the game, go back to where the zombies were, and see if I can grind up both the cloth tunic and the base lard as well as pick up their soul, because it's fairly useful later on. Hello again! Queen Rain here. And I'm here to pick up where I left off. I've gotten the Wing Skeleton Soul, or the Bat Soul, since I last pick up, as well as the Zombie Soul. I've also picked up um, a Base Lard, and the cloth tunic. So, with that, we'll move on to the next boss. Or rather, our first sub-boss. The Creaking Skull. The uh, Creaking Skull is basically just a large skeleton. Very, very large skeleton. He's honestly not much of a threat. He, he's pretty slow, but his attacks can do a lot of damage if you're careless. One thing you want to watch out for, though, is this axe armor on the way there, because this axe armor is very strong. It can do, like... 30 damage when he hits you, which at this point in the game is a lot of damage. The Creaking Skull, on the other hand, can do, uh... Look out for that! Watch out for his crushing attack, but be very wary of his fireball attack. The fireball attack does, like, 80-some damage. Now, remember what I said about the uh, wing skeleton spear being fairly strong? Well, it's very useful against the uh, Creaking Skull in both its incarnations as a sub-boss as well as a regular enemy. And now that the Creaking Skull is out of the way, we get the castle first castle map, and we get treated to another save point. So, with that... I'm going to cut the video here and go back and do some more grinding, and I'll see you guys again uh, next time.